Hello guys, Sadie here and today we are going to go through the walk of fame of the iPhones which means that we're going to take the very first iPhone, compare it with the rest to see how the iPhones has evolved through the years because if you look at the iPhone 60, so we'll say it looks exactly like the iPhone 15, why should it upgrade? When the 15 came, someone said like it looks like the 14, why should it upgrade? And like that you keep saying it for every other device but if you compare for example the iPhone X with the current iPhone 16, you will see that they are changes. Even if you compare the iPhone 11, yes, they kind of have kept the same structure, like the same design, but it's still there for now. It has a capture button, we have an action button, it's USB-C, like the most noticeable updates compared to the 11, for example. But there's so many things to compare, like, you even remember the very first iPhone? Yes, when it came out in 2007, I was only six years old. I didn't even have a phone. At this point but some people were buying it and in fact it was something revolutionary for its time because people were just not used to having this technology so let's see how the iPhones has evolved through the years we are starting off with the very first iPhone that was out in 2007 this is what it looks like for the people who are unfamiliar with it was something revolutionary as I said because back in the day people were using with the Blackberry phones or just any phone that has a tiny screen and a keyboard built with the phone. Flip phones as well were most modern phones at this time. So having something that most of it is just screen, the keyboard is built inside this phone, was something that you see every day. And also, you didn't need a stylus for this thing. The only stylus you need is something called a finger, primary probably this one, that you just use to navigate everywhere. You don't need any other built-in support from any other external devices. And as Steve Jobs have said that styluses that you keep losing everywhere, oh, who needs this? And honestly, I have to say, he had a right. Yes, my mom did have a phone that had a stylus back in the day, but she barely even used it. So what's the point of stylus? Some people use them, some people not. But Steve Jobs said that we don't need a stylus. We do have fingers, which we're gonna use to navigate yet. Selfie camera wasn't a thing, but the storage back then were four, eight and 16 gigabytes. Do you see how it was four gigabytes on a phone? Can you even imagine doing this nowadays? My mic and Brosty had 128, use a brand which is good but comparing to this what we see nowadays is just not it it's a phone fully functioning nowadays it's so hard to find the original iphone that some people will pay thousands of dollars i really remember watching a few years ago mkbhd video when he paid forty thousand dollars to get the original iphone and unbox it you should definitely go check this video out i was crazy like how much people paid just to Touch this piece of technology because nowadays it might be even more expensive than a painting or something so some people used to call it the 2g because there was a lack of support for 3g but back in the day 2007 talking about 3g like you know it's not the most popular thing but definitely this phone was something revolutionary moving on to the iphone 3g and 3gs so basically these phones like design, they look a lot like the very first iPhone. They do have better support when it comes to 3G. This is why they're called like this. The S on the 3GS is for speed, basically better connectivity. The RAM on the iPhone 3G is 128 gigabytes. On the 3GS, it's upgraded to 256. Also, the storage is 18 and 16 gigabytes on the 3G. And we're finally upgrading. We have 18, 16 and 32 gigabytes on the iPhone 3GS, so to have more memory, more storage as an option, it's great considering that people now are buying one terabyte phones just because of the high quality pictures and videos and just content that they are filming. So I will say these are necessary upgrades. As usual, every year Apple is upgrading their battery life, trying to make it better, to last longer. The chargers were a little bit chunky, if I can say it like this, back in the days compared to what we have now. But let's talk about the fact that this is like around the 2009-10. So technology wasn't as advanced as it is now. From the iPhone 3G and 3GS, we move to the iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S. So for the first time, we finally have front-facing camera. We can tell selfies, guys. 
you know, it's something so usual that we probably do a few times a day. Even when I'm filming this video, it's like I'm taking a selfie because I'm using my front camera. But back in the days to have a front facing camera to take good quality selfies, that's uh, something I'm literally not seen on every smartphone that exists. And I say good because the quality back then compared to the quality right now, it's like, I don't even know if I should compare them, but the RAM storage has increased. We're going to 512 megabytes and we have the 860 32 gigabytes on the regular 4 and the 4s finally introduced the well-known 64 gigabytes of an option which we all know was kept to the iphone 12 do you see how many iphones have 64 gigabytes of option yes this thing has increased with time because now we have one terabyte but we need more storage if you're taking more high quality pictures and videos but when we talk about the iphone 4 this is not something that will take that much space compared to what phones nowadays do. But I do have to say, people are definitely taking advantage of the front facing camera. The next updated iPhones are the iPhone 5, 5C and the 5S. Yes, we have three iPhone lineups now. And the most noticeable thing, finally, we have 4G. Yes, now we have more speed. 4G is still something that people use if you don't have 5G around. 3G is pretty much accurate to having no service because it's very, very low. And that's why they upgraded. I have even heard rumors about the 6G, but we'll come or not. This is a talk for another day, maybe another video. I don't know. But we are improving now the RAM on all these three phones. It's a whole gigabyte. Yeah, it sounds like unbelievable, but we are progressively upgrading the iPhone 5C it still has the 8 gigabytes of option but the other two phones the regular the iPhone 5 and the 5S are just 16 32 and 64 options of gigabytes the cameras are improving since the iPhone 4 now we can shoot HD 1080p it's something that most people still use while they're vlogging or just shooting videos so HD videos came with the iPhone 4, kept evolving with the iPhone 5, and keep evolving. But the most revolutionary phone is the iPhone 6. The iPhone 6 was the update of the iPhone that changed. Now, this is the iPhone 6, and now we have 6 Plus. So we have even bigger size compared to the iPhone 5. The iPhone 6 was already larger in screen, but you have even larger phone. Now, do you need it? Some people say it's too large, it's like a thin brick, but it's still a full functional device. Battery is improving with every single iPhone. We do have still one gigabyte of RAM, but now we have 128 gigabytes as a storage option. We are slightly increasing, as you know, that now the starting option for the Allegro 16 lineup is 128. Even the Pro Max models drop this because 128 it's not enough, we need more. But the fact that we slowly see how we upgrade, we started with 4 gigabytes on the very first iPhone. Now we can upgrade up to 128. And I remember that news was talking about this phone. Also, like it some articles say that this is the most sold out iPhone from all of them that has ever been made. I think I read this article like two to three years ago, so the newest iPhones weren't made yet, weren't invented. But the fact that so many people bought this phone, it was larger. It still has the home button. We have Touch ID, you know. But for some reason, people like the slicker design. It was thinner. And also the colorful options. We had gold, silver, space gray, you know. It's just... Apple keeps playing with the colors. Yes, we didn't have Pro models back then. You just had iPhone, iPhone Plus, but people were still buying it. The iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus are not that different from the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Basically, yes, the RAM has increased to two gigabytes now. We see how the same storage option, 16 to 32, 64 and 128. The cameras and the batteries are improving, but people were still buying the iPhone 6 because it's, it was the original update of the iPhone 6. Because 6S 
and a 6s plus so i would say it's the exact same phone yes they did the color change this was my very first iphone i had the rose gold iphone 6s i still keep it just can't let go of it it, it just has memories also is filtered with all the stuff battery has improved definitely it was lasting me a day and a half i believe or maybe even two days back in the day because us apple always says it's the best battery on an iphone ever made now probably because i have drained the battery also used it for three years and the iphone is old it can last me depending on how much i use it probably have to charge it from zero to hero like twice a day but i just love this phone when i use it the camera was good i shoot some videos with this phone like back in the day when musically was a thing if you don't know what musically is you're too young to understand but i have to say the camera was good definitely and he helped me build up some videos compared to the recent phone that i'm using yes the camera is not something you would like to have but i i will say i was in love with this phone probably because it was my very first iphone the iphone se finally made an appearance after the iphone 6s the 6s plus we have the iphone se it looks a lot like the iphone 5 as a design many people were confused is this an se or it's a 5 i will say it was their most sold out phone because it's kind of going back to the older designs that apple kind of tried to escape and build something bigger so when it comes to the screen real estate the size of the screen it definitely was smaller but i'm not gonna complain i do have to say it was a good sold out phone, it still has 2GB of RAM and up to 128GB of storage. But I will say, because the 6S was around and also the iPhone 6, people were buying these much more compared to the smaller, more compact iPhone SE. But also we have to say, since it's an SE, it's a more like a beginner phone, it has some limitations compared to the regular lineup of the iPhone, so that's why it was cheaper and it didn't have all the functions and capabilities of a regular iPhone. Moving on to the iPhone 7 and the Apple 7 Plus. My friends got it literally a few months after I got my iPhone 6 and I was like, really? You have to be kidding me. It came out right after I got my newest iPhone. But it is what it is. The biggest change that you might notice is that there is no headphone jack in. So this is what the headphones used to look like. Yes, I still prefer the packaging that Apple did. These are the original headphones from my iPhone 6s. I still use them not that much but this is the headphone jack that they used to have as you can see and on the iphone 7 the iphone jack was removed so we said okay we're gonna remove this we were gonna give you a dongle which you can attach so you can use your headphones also they started shipping them with like cardboard a little bit i don't know i still use this from time to time but since i got my airpods i do have to say that these are kind of going down but i still miss the way apple was packaging it because i feel like for these type of headphones, wired headphones, this is a better way to keep them in place, my opinion, but they removed it. Some people were upset with it, other people were okay. Of course, battery is improving, camera is improving. We now have dual camera on the iPhone 7 Plus. And this is when we started having two cameras on the phone in general. Also, we have the option of 256 gigabytes of storage which shows how we increase it. So the camera is improving. You might need more storage as well compared to what we're going now that some iPhones have 256 gigabytes of storage as a starter. This was the limitation, but we're talking about the iPhone 7 and we'll keep evolving from there. The iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus weren't that different when it comes to the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus. So pretty much people saw minor differences. Again, like... The battery, the storage is even the same. We have three gigabytes of RAM when it comes to the eight plus, but we also have this in the seven plus until 256 gigabytes of storage. We still had no headphone jack, but this time the headphones weren't shipped with a dongle. Basically they were just changed. So the end of the headphones now was with what we well know is a lightning cable. So you can put them directly into the whole of your charger but the differences weren't that big probably because it was the iphone anniversary and we were hyped up to see what the iphone x will look like to what change the iphones to the way they look now and this is the iphone x 
and we're gonna include the iPhone XR. So the iPhone XR had a lot of colorful options. The iPhone X got removed from the Touch ID button. Now we have something called facial recognition. I still haven't used this though because I don't want to, but pretty much yes, this is the only reason. I trust my passcode enough and I don't want to use Face ID, but it was another way to unlock your phone and to be more secure that your data and even when it gets stolen it's not gonna get unlocked also like the biggest change was this that we removed the touch id button we now have 64 and 256 gigabytes of storage while the iphone xr also has 128 as the options three gigabytes of ram but there is another iphone in this line second iPhone was an iPhone XS and we also have an XS Max. So finally we have 4 gigabytes of RAM, we are improving. We have three variety of colors, we have gold, white and black, I have the black one. And also we have new storage option up to 5, 12 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, cameras are improving, batteries are improving, like coming from my iPhone 6s to the iphone xs i do have to say i saw the improvement when it comes to the battery life immediately probably because i was with my iphone 6s for three years the battery started draining i drained to 73 74 percent it wasn't that crucial but definitely i saw the improvement when i got a new phone with a fresh new battery yes you can just change the battery in your iphone and you're good to go but also technologies are improving and even if, no matter how many times you change the battery, you just still want to keep up with the new technologies. But it kept the same. The facial recognition was here. There was no touch ID button. The headphones don't have a headphone jack anymore. They're just plain headphones that are shipped with. But also it was around the time when people were talking rumors about the AirPods. But still, the regular headphones were making an appearance. Something that changed the iPhone lineup was the coming of the iPhone 11 have the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max. This is the first time when we have a Pro model of a phone. So pretty much we have three iPhones this year. The regular iPhone 11 is up to 256 gigabytes of storage and four gigabytes of RAM. 512 were kept for the Pro and the Pro Max. So you can imagine like the Max phone is just a bigger version of the Pro. They still kept it with three colors, but we're finally moving up to so basically the pro max is where this started for the most advanced iphone existing it has the best battery life the better screen the best cameras which we keep seeing evolving every single year so people were just excited to see okay what this pro has compared to for example the iphone xs or the xs max is there a difference except for the color, the design? Now, we have three cameras, three cameras on an iPhone. People were a little bit confused. Why do we need another camera? But I feel like at this point they're used to, because if you check the Samsung Galaxy S series, the Ultra has quite a lot of cameras. So I do have to say, you can't complain about the iPhone having too many cameras because you know, they just are enough to take the perfect picture or video. The iPhone SE second generation made an appearance. It still has a touch ID button. It looks like the iPhone 6, the iPhone 7, and the iPhone 8 as well combined. Like design is up to 256 gigabytes. You know, it's a lower budget phone. So I do have to say it's a starter phone. It has some limitations. It doesn't have multiple cameras, but it's still a good functioning phone. Were people buying it? Yes, because Apple says that this is like a beginner phone for people who didn't have an iPhone before they want to start, so they don't want to get the best of the best, which was the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but we keep upgrading from there. Moving on to the iPhone 12 mini, the first time we have one, the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, and the 12 Pro Max. So pretty much from the iPhone 11, there aren't that many differences. Yes, we still have battery improvements, camera improvements, we're now focusing more on filming 4K videos. Also, we do have storage, RAM, the basic things that Apple is focused on. But people were having issues with the iPhone mini and specifically the battery. They were saying, yes, the size is great. Many people were taking it when they go hiking or just the fact that the size is the palm of your hand. You can put it in your pocket and you're good to go without worrying about the size or 
anything else that it might fall out or something. Battery was the biggest complaint among the people and the reason why the iPhone mini wasn't performing very well. Let's just say that the size might be good, but you should know that when you have a smaller phone, the battery can be compared to the Pro Max, for example. It has the biggest battery, it's the biggest phone. So, like, yes, I understand that they want a bit longer battery compared to, for example, the regular iPhone 12. But Apple tried to fix the issue with the next generation iPhone. Next iPhone lineup, we have the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13, 13 Pro, and the Pro Max. So finally, we have an upgrade to the base model. It has 512GB of storage option. We were used to being up to 256, but on a base model, since they are improving, you need more storage. Yes, the battery on the iPhone mini, it got fixed. We have 1.5 hours battery more, but people were still complaining, it's not enough. We need bigger battery. We need something more. Yes, this is the second and the last iPhone mini. I don't think Apple will make a return. If they don't somehow fix the battery, I don't know exactly what people want from this battery, but I guess just due to the poor sales, Apple decided, okay, we tried. It wasn't selling good enough. So we won't make the iPhone mini anymore. It's just not selling well for us. But we finally have on the Pro models one terabyte of storage option, which we keep until today, but this was the first appearance of the one terabyte. And believe it or not, people were buying it. They were like, we need more storage. I do high quality pictures, videos. I just shoot a lot of content on my phone. I need more storage. And also the RAM got upgraded from four to six gigabytes, you know, upgrading the storage, you need to upgrade the RAM as well. For fully functioning phone, yes, the cameras keep getting bigger and bigger. And people were complaining, like, why do you need bigger cameras? Can you just keep the same size and just add the new specifications? Yes, you can. We did even have cinematic modes. On the iPhone 30, this is something like, it was the best thing ever. Every time when I just try for a video or for some reason I just turn on the cinematic mode on my phone, like, why don't I use it more often? But I was like, why should I use it more often? Like, what type of video should I make to use my cinematic mode more often? We have macro mode, something that I will say that I use every single day, but when I'm trying to take pictures, yes, I do for better focusing, but iPhones keep improving every single year. The third generation of the iPhone SE appeared. It kind of looks like the second generation, honestly, like design, barely any difference yes they kind of fix the camera a little bit the battery but of course still a more entry level iphone we still have the same 4 gigabytes of ram we also have up to 256 gigabytes of storage so i do have to say it's a good upgrade but when you have like something like the iphone 13 pro max do you really even bother to look at the iphone s some people were do you have to say or like buy for your kid who is not ready to have a real iPhone, so you get it. It's, it's cheaper and also, I do have to say, well, it's still fully functional iPhone. Yes, it has only one camera, it still has the old school like Touch ID button, which I kind of miss even though I have it on my iPad Air. But it was a fun little thing to play with, but it's an upgrade. Small, but meaningful. iPhone 14 lineup where I have my current iPhone, on which I shot this video. So we have the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Plus, they dropped the mini and replaced it with the Plus. We have the iPhone 14 Pro and my phone, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So difference is that we have six gigabytes of RAM on the base models as well. We still have the notch, but if you have noticed from like the iPhone X Pro to the iPhone 13, you kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, releasing more screen real estate to the iPhone 14. But on the Pro models, we finally removed it and have the so-called dynamic island. Basically, I recently watched a video, someone said it's just so stupid, like barely any use of it. But I still use it from time to time. Yes, when I'm listening to music, for example, I open up Spotify, I just close this app and open another one, I can change my tracks using the dynamic island if you use the type. There, there is a use of the dynamic island, let's just say that not many people were using it properly, I guess, or just they didn't find it something that they use every day in their ordinary lives. But also we still have the one terabyte 
of storage, the 6 gigabytes. But the dynamic color was the biggest change compared to the iPhone 13 Pro models. iPhone 15, we have the regular 15, 15 Plus, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. So Apple officially dropped the mini. We have the iPhone Plus, so now the regular lineup also has the dynamic island. So people who want the regular lineup don't want to pay for the Pro models, you can enjoy your dynamic island. The colors, I will say, some people say that they were too light, too flushed, like different opinions. Personally, I like every color lineup that Apple comes with. I have zero complaints, but the color is not what matters. It's about the phone. So definitely the battery on the iPhone Plus has been upgraded. So people were happier to have a Plus than rather a mini phone. Another change when it comes to the Pro models now, we have updated the RAM from 6 to 8 gigabytes. Also, on the Pro Max model, we don't have 128 gigabytes of storage anymore. We started from 256. And the newest thing that is the only difference I would say major difference from the iPhone 14 Pro lineup is the action button. So basically, instead of having a switch mute button, you have an action button which you can completely customize to be whatever you want. It could be your camera, your flashlight, again, your switch mute, pretty much everything. You can even use the shortcuts app if you want to add something specific. And Apple was talking a lot about it. Yes, it's a cool feature, but it's just another button. Yes, it's called an action button and that is the only difference. We still have the dynamic island, same storage options. Yes, cameras are getting improving every single year as well as the battery life. But honestly, major differences is only the action button. Moving on to the latest and current iPhone lineup. We have the iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. So all of them have the dynamic island. Even the base models have the action button. And now the new feature that all of them have, not only the pro models like Apple usually does, is a new capture button. Even though Apple refuses to call it the button, I don't know what else it should be called because you still click, press, whatever you call, you just do some interactions with this button. So what this button does is that now you can open your camera from there and use all your camera features that you have pretty much like you can change styles, you can choose your contrast, also like zoom in, zoom out, everything you can do with the camera, you can do it from this button. Many people say that it's repetitive because can you do the same thing from the action button? Like if you set it to open your camera, other people say the more places I have to open my camera, the better because I use my phone for content creation all the time. So I'll say there are mixed opinions about this, but that you have to, it's useful depending on how often you use your camera. And if you really think that there is an ex should be an extra button for this. But now we have eight gigabytes of RAM also on the baseline models. So what else has left to enjoy the new lineup and see what Apple will do for the next iPhone. Okay guys, that was it. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below, what was your favorite iPhone that has ever been made? Was it the original one? Was it maybe the iPhone 8? Do you have an iPhone that just seemed like it was better than the rest for you when you're looking at specifications? Of course, if I have to get deep dive into every single thing that has been upgraded, including like every specification of the camera, the battery, it will take forever because there's so many iPhones. We already have 17, not including the three iPhone SE. I have made so many videos about rumors for the next iPhone SE that I don't know at this point if you will come or not, if Apple will continue making iPhone SE or will just discontinue. There are no rumors about this, but also we don't know when the next one will be updated because I believe the iPhone SE third generation was in 2022. So think about an upgrade if they're ever gonna do it. But that will be the video. Hope you enjoyed. Please smash that like button. I can like this video, share it with friends. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the bell so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos. And I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!